Hey guys, welcome back to Periodic Surf Go and welcome back to our workshop. So throughout this SUP build series, we have been working on our nine foot six wooden SUP board and taking you through every step of the way to guide you through it. Now in the last video, we got the rails attached, which means we are practically ready for the top deck, which is to say this thing is really close to being done. However, there is a few little things to be done ahead of time and that's what we're going to cover in this video. Now, I guess the first thing that we can look at is removing all of this excess material on our rails because our top deck should lay over and be able to overhang. And as it currently stands, that's not going to happen. We could do this all with just a block plane or a spoke shave and remove this material bit by bit but that is a lot of material to remove with a plan. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna use one of these kind of cheap saws there. It's a Japanese style, even though this isn't a Japanese saw. And I'm just going to start cutting off most of this material. I'm not trying to get it flush because we don't want to accidentally dip the saw and go too far because then we have to repair it. Uh, but I'm just trying to get it so we don't have to remove 15 to 20 mil of material. Every now and again, I'm just cutting through and snapping off the excess and that allows me to tilt my saw again and get it back on track. So if it looks like it's gonna start going down or up, I just bring it out, cut it off and re-establish that cut. Uh, another really good saw for this would be a coping saw because that's such a thin blade, you'd be able to do this very quickly. Now, once most of it is trimmed off, the, the job of using a block plane is a lot easier. So we can come in and now we can just remove this material. The idea of the slope that we're going for here isn't flat or horizontal, but it's actually to match the curvature of these ribs. So in the sections where we've got this kind of uh, additional bracing, we can actually just use that in our favor to keep our, our plane tilted. But in the areas like at the nose and the tail where this doesn't extend, we are just gonna have to freehand it a little bit more than, uh, than up in those sections. Essentially, the way I like to do it is I like to look at the curve and I just try and set my plane for about the same angle. Um, while we're roughing it out, not that big of a deal, but when it comes to the final couple of passes where we're smoothing it, then it does play quite an important role. One other thing that you do have to keep in mind though is collisions. These ribs are, are higher than our rails, so it's really uh, easy to slip and hit your rib and damage it. So be quite mindful of that and try and keep your plane tilted away from the ribs and on this side. So. so here at the nose, you can see we're getting really close because those two dark filler strips are now getting blended in to our solid rail strips. This is the time where it starts to get a bit more important of trying to match this angle. So this is where we're tilting the blade carefully and trying to conform to the, the actual curve of the deck. Now, so here you can see we're actually getting pretty darn close to where we need to be. Uh, so what I need to start doing now is checking the progress. So I'm gonna be laying pieces over and just checking for the gaps that we're looking at. So here we can see we actually need to be a little bit steeper and I can basically say that's gonna be the case across the board. Now a little trick which can be useful, especially for new time uh, shapers like this, is you can use a rasp or a file to create a stop, if you will. So you're gonna line it up and we can see that this one has to be slightly steeper because there's a very slight gap. So we're basically gonna use the rasp like this to bring it into the correct angle. Now that ridge is, is perfect. 
So this is essentially using a very similar trick to what chair makers would use to hollow out a seat, except this time we're using it to actually plane to the correct surface. Now, of course, you could actually use a rasp for the entire process from here on. So the trick with a rasp is if you're looking for rapid removal, you have it kind of going across the grain. If you're looking for fairing, then you kind of tilt it along the work so that you're using the whole length of the rasp and that will be a fairing cut. So instead of aggressive removal, this is kind of fine tuning. So hopefully it actually shows up on camera, but you can see just how close we are to removing those marks we left with a rasp. So we know that we're actually at the angle that we need to be and we're only a few passes away. And there it is, that has all disappeared. All right, so that is now shaped in and we have a nice surface which matches the curvature of the deck. And now when we lay our top skin over, all of this big, fat, chunky section is glue area. And it means that we can really shape this in and have a really perfect rail on this board. Now at this stage, we don't have to worry about the bottom yet because we'll do that a much faster way because uh, it's basically flat. Uh, but we would have to repeat this for the other side. However, we're gonna leave the other side for now and move on to the solid nose and tail blocks. Right, so I've got you looking at the tail here and you can see that we've got this big, well, it's an empty spot at the moment and that is not what we want. We want a nice big solid block. So to do this infill, what we're going to do is stack layers of our off cuts. So that can be either from the deck skins or the rails. I'm gonna be using the rail off cuts cause they're a bit smaller and we're just going to be gluing them in place and stacking them until they've come up to the full height. So in this case, it'll be about five layers. To come up with this template though, we're just going to use some painter's tape to mark it out basically. So we're going to lay the tape in and we're just going to actually build up a template directly off the board. Here it is. And now this here is perfect for creating a little template. So what we can do is trace the kind of shape that we're looking for. So I'm gonna be going across like that. And a bit like that. So now as we peel all of this up, what we're left with is an actual one-to-one -one template that we've created directly off of our deck skins. And we can see that that is a pretty close match to what we traced earlier. And now where this template that we've just made is used is to create the blocks themselves. So here I've got the offcuts from our rails and there's four of them. So that should bring it up to the correct thickness, which is 24 millimeters and that is 24 millimeters. So that is plenty and basically all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to lay this over these pieces here, sticking it down, and then using that directly to cut out this block. So to make sure that everything comes out to the same size, I'm actually just going to tape everything together. And we're doing all four layers at the same time, so it's all the same. You can definitely do this with a jigsaw, but a bandsaw is a better method. Um, so to show you, here's a jigsaw. So all we need to do is apply the glue and make sure that it fits in there just right. And as we can see, that is perfect. So we've got a nice tight gap on our rails here. And it means that when we come in and just do our final kind of trimming, we've got nice amount of material. So that is looking really good. All right, so that is the tail block in. However, it isn't actually finished because that happens after the top skin is on. So the same deal with the nose, that gets a nose block as well, but that happens after the skin is installed. So essentially we're putting a cap on the tail and the nose of these boards to give it a little bit of visual interest. Now, the last thing that we need to do is the hardware support material. Now, our kits come with all of the hardware that you need for your fin boxes. So on SUP, it's the 10 and a half inch fin box. You've also got the FCS Fusion style 
for your uh, thrusters or your side fins, and a vent plug, of course, with leash plug. But all of these have to be mounted into some sort of solid material. We can't just go into air. Now you'll remember when we were cutting out our bottom skins using the template, we marked the positions of the fins. And that is, well, obviously the positions of the fins. But the reason we did it there was to give us the finished position of our fin plugs on the inside of our board. So we can see where we need to build up some material. Now, the simplest way of doing this would be to use more of your off cuts and just stack up material until you have it at the correct thickness. So in the, S, in the uh, FCS fins, that's another three layers on top. And then for the uh, center fin box, you would actually stack it up edgeways on the spine. However, that will add a very small amount of weight. It's not much, but it is weight. So what you could use is also just foam, so styrofoam or EPS. So with the foam, of course, that has absolutely no weight to it, or very little anyway. And what we can do is just cut off a block, glue it down here, glue it down here, and do the same deal for the center fin. So if you do choose to go the, uh, the foam route, make sure you do use polyurethane, uh, as it is by far the best glue for gluing foam. All right, so that is the foam style installed, but the other way, which is using the scrap, is really similar as well. So I'm just going to be applying glue to the areas and all the faces here and clamping these pieces in place so that we've spaced this out so it is wide enough and thick enough to accommodate that fin box. Now, if you wanted your leash plug to be in a very specific location, you would also add some material there. But for me, I'm gonna be more than happy having my leash plug in our tail block. So I don't need to add any material there in this instant. So the last piece of material that we need to install is the support for our vent plug. And the vent plug is very important because it vents our board. So you can see on the spine that we have this slot here and it is labeled a vent plug. So that is actually after we have installed it, where we drill through and break into the board. So this is actually where all the air can escape. I am once again, just going to use foam for this because it doesn't need to be anything special. So when we get it around there, we can see once that is clamped in with glue, that is gonna be plenty. So more than the size of our vent plug for sure and easy to kind of compress in. So bit of glue on them, clamp, and we're done. Now you can see I'm actually just intentionally installing it so it's slightly proud. So once the glue's dried, we actually sand that flush. Okay, so that is all of the prep that goes into the board ahead of gluing on the top skin. So we have our fin box support material for both our center and side fins. We have enough material in our tail block for that leash plug, but if you wanted it somewhere else, you would have to install that as well and we have our vent plug support material as well. So all of this is now ready to go. That's it for this video. The next one is gonna be the top skin and we'll be getting on to shaping. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our hollow core wooden surfboard and stand up paddleboard related videos. So build tips, build guides, tricks and tips and just cool stuff all around. So hit that subscribe button and check that notification icon.